this video we'll be looking at mutations so you need to know the definition of a mutation you need to know the effects of mutations so some of them are harmful some of them are harmless and then some of them are useful you need to know that they uh, contribute to genetic variation you need to know the difference between a gene mutation a chromosomal mutation so that basically means the definition and then you also need to know that mutations lead to altered characteristics in each of the following disorders. So in hemophilia, which we did in a previous video, it is the absence of blood clotting factors. Color blindness is due to the absence of the proteins that comprise either the red or the green cones or the photoreceptors in the eye. And then Down syndrome, which we did during meiosis, uh, which is due to an extra copy of chromosome 21 as a result of non disjunction here in meiosis so once again your exam guidelines are very important because they give you important information and in some cases they'll even give you steps like with transcription and translation and definitions that are important looking at the definition of mutation it is any change in the genetic makeup so the DNA of an organism they can occur spontaneously but in the presence of certain factors, and these factors could be chemical substances, for example, they can be accelerated. Now, also important is that not all mutations are inherited. The only ones that are inherited are the mutations that occur in the sex organs during gametogenesis, so the production of gametes um, that will then fuse and produce offspring. So that is the only time that these mutations can be inherited. Now the two types of mutations that you need to know is the chromosome mutations or the chromosomal mutations which we looked at during meiosis and this occur occurs when meiosis does not occur normally. So um, another term for that is abnormal meiosis and an example of that is trisomy 21 also known as Down syndrome. Now the new one is a gene mutation. So what is a gene mutation? It is when the nucleotide sequence of nucleic acids change. So nucleic acids being DNA or RNA. And the code for protein synthesis changes as a result. So because we change the nucleotide sequence, it changes uh, protein synthesis in the end, the code for protein synthesis, which will lead to something completely different. And this can occur during a replication of DNA, during transcription of DNA or mRNA, and then crossing over at metaphase 1 during meiosis. So what can mutations lead to? So the first one is a harmless mutation, also known as a neutral or silent mutation. And this is because they have really no effect on what you look like or the functions of your body in any way. So the reasons that these are also known as harmful, mu uh, sorry, harmless mutations um, is because of the following bullet points which we'll quickly look at. Now when mutations occur in the non-coding parts of DNA, so that is also why they are harmless because they occur in the non-coding parts of DNA. Now when we did DNA in class, I did uh, briefly mentioned that about 1% of DNA is coding DNA. So it's directly responsible for uh, transferring genes. Whereas 99%, around about there, is non-coding DNA. So they really don't have an effect of what is being transferred or not. Um, then a second reason they are harmless, they are not seen in the phenotype, but they are in the genotype and can be passed on to future generations. So phenotype, remember, features the outward appearance of an organism. So they do not occur on your body in any way. So you don't suddenly have a growth on your face. Um, but there is a mutation that has occurred and that is seen in the genotype and it can be passed on. To future generations. Now the mutation may not affect the amino acid if the codon that was mutated still codes for the same amino acid so the protein remains the same. Now 
we have around we, we have 20 amino acids and those 20 amino acids um, will have specific codes uh, called codons that will um, code for those amino acids so using this table as an example let's say we've got a dna code um, with thymine thymine and cytosine so those three make a codon and then the mrna um, version of that would then be adenine adenine and guanine and that codon codes for lysine so the amino acid lysine so let's say we change through a mutation cytosine is changed to thymine that means the mrna codon will then be adenine but luckily this specific codon still codes for the amino acid lysine because there are only 20 amino acids um, there is a m immense load of combinations that could occur um, because of the nitrogenous basis this one still codes for lysine so it will really have no effect on the protein looking at it visually um, using another example so using a GTA that codes for valine as an example um, with the mutated form the adenine is swapped with thymine so now it is GTT which is the codon and once again GTT also codes for valine which does not influence this um, chain of amino acids at all so the protein will still remain the same and then some mutations can be seen in the phenotype but it will not affect the chances of survival of the organism um, examples of this is having freckles or having attached or detached earlobes okay so this won't affect your survival in any way it does not affect your daily life you won't suddenly die because you you've developed a freckle so they have really no influence on your life so that is the end of harmless mutations now we're going to look at harmful mutations so these types of mutations cause genetic disorders and generally occur on the autosome so these harmful gene mutations influence your life negatively and examples of this is albinism which you guys should know about and then sickle cell anemia which you might have heard of but you don't exactly know what it is now albinism is caused by a recessive gene that does not produce the pigment melanin so melanin is responsible for skin color so if you live in areas where there's lots of sun for example Africa uh, close to the equator you will have quite a lot of melanin um, in your skin whereas if you live in European countries you will have less melanin and melanin is also responsible for the absorption of vitamin D and vitamin D comes from the Sun so people that have um, higher levels of melanin need to absorb more vitamin D and that is why um, they live in these equ uh, equatorial regions usually uh, southern regions where there's lots of sunlight now Europeans generally or people that live in the northern hemisphere with less melanin need less vitamin D um, because of the lack of melanin so they don't need as much sunshine um, and that is why you'll find fairer skin in the northern hemisphere where there is less sunlight which is quite interesting now getting back to albinism um, it is not a sex linked uh, disorder and it occurs equally in both sexes so what are these characteristics of albinism generally the people will have pale skin uh, they have no pigmentation in their hair uh, they have a higher risk of skin cancer and sensitivity to the sun and then they can also have vision defects moving on to sickle cell anemia so let's break down anemia the word anemia so an 
the prefix uh, means not or no. And then emia, as long as as soon as you see emia, you know it always means blood. So what anemia basically is is less than normal red blood cells um, in the human body. So sickle cell anemia is a gene mutation that occurs in malaria areas of Central and West Africa and then also certain parts of the Mediterranean. Now the gene that codes for hemoglobin, we know that hemoglobin is responsible for the transport of oxygen and also um, the gene that codes for, codes for hemoglobin production is changed and causes abnormally shaped hemoglobin, also known as hemoglobin S. And this causes the red blood cells to become sickle shaped and they cannot transport oxygen effectively. So this is a sickle um, shaped red blood cell and then that is a normal red blood cell. Now these sickle shaped red blood cells can cause blockages in your arteries and veins which is not good, it leads to poor circulation and then people with this have a very short life expectancy generally. Representing um, sickle cell anemia with regards to genetic crosses, we will use Hb for hemoglobin and then the allele, um, the alleles are written um, at the top of uh, the HB. So somebody that has a normal allele for normal hemoglobin will be represented with an A and then somebody that has uh, abnormal hemoglobin so having sickle cells will be represented with an S. For somebody to have sickle cell anemia because it is recessive they have to be homozygous recessive. A normal person will be either homozygous or heterozygous but if somebody is heterozygous and carries that recessive allele um, they can still have mild symptoms for sickle cell anemia but now the very interesting thing um, with regards to this is that these people aren't as likely to get malaria as others um, they, they kind of I don't want to say become resistant to malaria but the plasmodium parasite doesn't attach or, or multiplies effectively in people that are heterozygous, so that have that recessive trait. And I've actually placed two links for articles and in the, under in the description tab um, under inter interesting reads that will explain this to you. And it all has to do about a gas that is released because of that recessive trait um, called carbon monoxide and it actually um, deters the plasmodium parasite from being able to multiply within the red blood cell because that is how malaria is able to take over the human body is because it multiplies in your red blood cell. So go have a look at that, that is quite an interesting read if you want to know more about that gas. Now, moving on to useful mutations. So these mutations are beneficial, they help us, they actually give us an advantage above other organisms and this is when the environment in which an organism lives can lead to useful mutations, such as helping the organism to survive or outcompete competitors. Now very important is that mutations lead to genetic variation. So we looked at genetic variation also when we were busy with meiosis and we know that genetic variation occurs because of crossing over um, that takes place during prophase 1 and then also the random assortment of the chromosomes uh, during metaphase of meiosis. So that all also leads to genetic variation. So what is genetic variation? It is a term used to describe the variation in the DNA sequence in each of our genomes. Genetic variation is what makes us all unique, whether in terms of hair color, skin color, or even the shape of our faces. Now, that is what makes you different from your siblings and why you aren't exact copies of each other or your parents. So, if you are siblings, you can still see um, certain features 
that will that will link you guys and make you look alike in a certain way but you are still unique and have your own unique features now with genetic variation and these useful mutations unfavorable characteristics tend to disappear over time as these favorable characteristics are then passed on through heredity and then new species may even eventually appear as the genetic composition is changed over time but this we'll look at in more detail when we get to evolution that is the end of this video Thank you.